Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the September books I have on hold to read. They're all lined up, ready to be consumed, and I'm really excited. Um, so you may not know, like fall is my favorite season. And as soon as I hit fall, outside of the way the outside is changing, the colors, the smells, the, the temp, everything, um, and all the seasonal flavors that come in with that, I'm also getting ready for Halloween. And I am going to start to up my thriller and mystery novels, um, especially by October. It'll pretty much be a top genre. Um, but I am still mixing it up for September. You're just going to see a lot more mystery and thriller because that is my mood once I get to this point in the year for sure. Um, but I do have a variety. So let's take a look at what I've got on line. Um, so I did pick one nonfiction book and that's this one I've been holding on to forever. And I'm just glad I'm finally going to get into it. The Everything Store about Jeff Bezos and the beginnings of Amazon. So I think I bought this book a year ago. It's been sitting on my TBR shelf for like ever. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, if you're not familiar, midway through the month of September and then at the end of the month, I'll do my book reviews. So if you're on the fence about this book, I'm happy to give some feedback. My reviews are spoiler free. Um, so just keep your ear out for that. I did select one fantasy novel for the month, and that is The King of Bones and Ashes by J.D. Horn. This is another one that's been on my shelf for several months. So essentially, this book is about witches and magic, and the magic in the world is dissipating. And I don't know if you're sure why that's happening. I think the main character is sort of trying to understand that. But witches are responding to it in two ways, because it sounds like essentially because the magic's leaking out of the world, some of them are becoming a little crazy, like they're losing their sanity. Um, so our main character is struggling with that. Um, but part of the witches have reacted to that situation by essentially starting to sacrifice people. And so it really, it sounds like it creates a divide within the witch community itself. Um, and also leads to our main character trying to understand a lot about her family and her own relationship with magic. Um, so it sounds really intriguing. Um, I got this book in a box, so I don't really know anything outside of that about it or the author. So I'm, I'm looking forward to delving into it. And just look how cool that cover is. Is that like not a perfect book to read for fall? So anyway, I love it. I absolutely love that. So <laughs> love this this month. Okay, so now we're going to get into fiction. So one of the books I am so stoked to read the Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. In fact, I'm so intrigued by the story. I'm actually going to do a literary focus on it that I'll put up in September um, that I'll explain a little bit more about later. Um, but essentially, The Nickel Boys is set in the 1960s um, in the South. I believe it is set in Tallahassee up in Florida. And our main character um, is an African-American boy who is just ready to start college and essentially gets convicted um, of a crime. It sounds like it's one of those crimes. It's not like murder or anything like that. It's something that like essentially there are the dogs <laughs> being at the wrong place at the wrong time. So um, it's, he gets sent to a detention center and the detention center, despite its attestment to rehabilitation is about abuse and it's not just physical abuse, but sexual abuse and it's extreme. And it's sort of about his survival and coping with that environment. Um, I've only read one other book by Colson Whitehead and I've actually got, I think three more um, planned between I think October and November. Um, so I'm trying to look over, yeah, like November, I'm reading three more. So I'm totally excited um, to read a little bit more of his writing as well. Um, so the next book on my list is part of a three book capsule. If you see my unboxing of capsule books, you get three books that are themed. So this next three are going to be from that. And the first one is The Perks of Being a Wildfla uh, Wildflower. I'll just take that bookmark out. Um, it actually is a movie. You probably know that. And um, I've never read the book. And it's especially, essentially, essentially about adolescence. Um, it sounds like it's told through the viewpoint of the main character, of course, but via letters. Um, and it's essentially about, you know, first dates, family drama, new friends, sex, drugs, and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So I can't, I just can't wait. I cannot wait to read, to read this book. 
Um, in fact, the cat, I love my capsule books. I love all my subscriptions. Okay. But well, but I, okay. I really love this subscription because this next one is so intriguing too. It's called, we are the ants. So essentially this boy has a number of things going on in his life. Again, we're talking about main character being an adolescent boy, but his mom's struggling um, to keep the family together. She's a chain smoker. His older brother is a college dropout and has a pregnant girlfriend. And he's slowly losing his grandmother to Alzheimer's and our main character's boyfriend committed suicide last year. So not an easy situation to be living in. And he's abducted by aliens. And apparently the aliens, I'm not making this up. This is the book. The aliens repeatedly get him from his sleep, pull him up on the ship for whatever reason, and then bring him back. And, it's, and then at some point, he doesn't know why this has continued to happen to him. I think it started when he was 13. So essentially, they let him know that he, he has the opportunity to save the world, that they plan on ending it, but he has 144 days to determine if the world is worth saving. And that is it. So, you know, we have this really quirky situation with some quirky characters and aliens. Um, and I love my quirky situations and quirky characters. And we have, but yet it turns into like this, is the world worth saving? Which I think is just a beautiful question. I'm going to be very analytical. And I love that too. So I am so intrigued and excited to dig into this book. Um, so after that, part of this capsule experience is the one in a million boy. And I love this cover too. It's just so pretty. Um, so essentially this book, our, one of our main characters is a 104 year old woman who is visited by this 11 year old boy who comes to like her home, I think on a weekly basis to basically help her with chores. And she talks to him and is kind of in, in sharing all of her wisdom from having been alive 104 years. And one day he suddenly stops coming and she's kind of put off and like, well, maybe he wasn't this great little boy I thought he was. Um, but his father then shows up to continue um, the service, the help that his son has been offering her. And then eventually the mom also um, steps in and comes on some weeks. And um, this the book is very much about this woman's relationship with all three members of the family and some learning and growth um, that we can have. So I, I'm just, so another one I'm just so excited about. This is like, I'm so stoked about this month, but um, okay. Next, last fiction book. And then we're getting into the mysteries and thrillers. Ask Again, Yes by Mary Beth Keene. So this book is set in, I'm blanking if it said where, the NYPD. Two main characters, two male police officers that are also neighbors living in the suburbs. They have wives. One has a son. The other has a daughter. They live next door to each other. All is well. The daughter and son um, have a great friendship. It sounds like there's like four generations of time somewhat that's covered with this book. Um, the daughter and son do fall in love, but something happens. Something not good, like tragic. And you don't know what it is, but it's results um just are huge and the way the all the friendships and the relationships are impacted and um generations the impact across generations of these families is what this book deals with and um yeah so i don't think this one's going to be a a happy read or a fun read but it's definitely going to be very intriguing and i i love that as well so i am another one that i have put into the mix okay now I'm going to slide them over. I couldn't even fit all my books on my big desk. All right. So four mystery thriller. The first book I'm going to pull up, I actually don't have yet because it is coming out September 10th. And that is Stephen King's The Institute. So I've been getting back into Stephen King lately. I read The Stand again a few months ago and something else by him. I've read a few books. It feels like in the past four or five months. And essentially that has just, made me just back into really enjoying what he has to offer. So the Institute comes out on the 10th and this is essentially this, well, let me say it's Stephen King. So a very unsettling story about a young boy in the middle of the night, a group of people break into his family's home and kill his parents and kidnap him and take him to this place called the Institute where they have killed the parents of several children and they have brought all the children to the Institute to basically study them and these children have extra normal, paranormal, some something 
semi normal, not normal um, powers, and they're trying to make use of them. So I, yeah, I am. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just so intrigued. I'm like, okay, Stephen King new book pre ordered, <laughs> done, coming to me September 10th. So I'm putting that on the list. Now this is a big boy. When I compiled my list of books for the month. I didn't look at this till yesterday. This is a 576 page book. So it's going to be fat. And I'm, but I'm going to remain optimistic. I've got this. That's what I'm telling myself. I've got this. I can do this. I'm actually contemplating setting my alarm a half hour earlier on my work days. So I can do a little bit more reading. I'm still contemplating. All right. Now into continuing mystery thriller horror. Um, Our House by Louise Candlish. So essentially this book is about woman has a home with a husband and a child or children and all of a sudden there's a new family moving into her house this is they bought the house and they own it and she has no clue where her husband and children are yep just happened um so she sounds crazy uh so she didn't sell the house she didn't know anybody was going to be selling her house and that is her reality so i can't wait to find out how this unfolds and what the actual reality is so that is our house this next book this is another cover that there is just something about it that I just find absolutely beautiful. Isn't that so cool? I love it. Um, so The Ruin. So this book is set in Ireland, out in the rural part of Ireland. And um, essentially, uh, uh, our main character, I believe, from how I read the back of the book, is this girl, teenage girl, whose boyfriend um, is found dead in the river. And they are saying it's suicide. But the boyfriend's sister believes it's foul play that her brother was murdered. But she, the sister, is the suspect for having killed her brother. And not just her brother, but their mother, who also just recently died of a, she was a drug and alcohol addled mother. Um, so she left her children orphans. So essentially that's, that's the thing. That's the thing right there. <laughs> So it's a small town noir traveled deep into the dark heart of Ireland where corruption, desperation, and crime run rife. So yes, how, I mean, does this book not just scream September to you? That did to me. Okay. I have another new release that literally just came out, came out, just came out, just came out. And if you are not already a Louise Penny reader, you seriously need to pick one up and try. I love the series. I have fallen so in love with Three Pines and all of the main characters in the series as hundreds of and thousands of people. Um, so this book just came out, or actually end of August, August 27th. So our main character is Inspector Gamache. This is set in a fictitious town called Three Pines. It's up in Canada. And I say up because I'm in the United States. <laughs> Some people may be like, oh, I'm in Canada. Canada's down <laughs> or west or east but anyway um so it's in Canada and our main character Inspector Gamache has essentially semi-retired or retired he's now going back to um not run solely but to partner with somebody who previously reported to him and um be a boss back at the the police place that was <laughs> That was really official. The what do they call it? The homicide department. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll just go with that. Um, a father comes to him whose child is missing and um, pulls in Inspector Gamash. But if you've been following the series, there has been a bunch of drama. There has been a bunch of um, not conviction. What's the word? Consp cons cons conspiracy. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, just bad politics, all kinds of things that have been going on that continue within this book. Um, so as the past handful of books, Inspector Gamash is trying to do what he does, but do it um, with a lot of big obstacles to overcome. And as always, the story is just sounds like it's going to be beautifully told. And it leads to a lot of reflection about people and human nature and love and life and everything else. And why I love Louise Penny's writing. Um, so a better man. I am definitely tackling. Okay, two more books, guys. I'm not even going to count them. I usually set a limit, and I know I hit it. Um, two more books. Okay, a lot of people have been talking about this book, so I'm so excited <laughs> to read it. Ruth Wears the Turn of the Key, similar to The Turn of the Screw, based on that. So essentially, based on that, but completely modernized. 
Um, so this book is about a woman who falls into a nanny role. She is not looking for a nanny role. She comes across the advertisement. The job description just sounds amazing. So it's essentially this really high pay live in nanny with this family with this really amazing smart home and these kids are like crazy well behaved right there right there a thousand flags should be going up too good to be true and it is it is she ends up getting um convicted and i don't know if she's convicted she's being charged with um the murder of i can't remember if it's the kids just the kids but the kids at least and the story is told while she is writing letters to her attorney in prison and um, she's talking about the crazy stuff that was unfolding within the house. So like, if you're afraid of smart technology, this is gonna, this is gonna speak to that fear. So it's like stuff happening in the middle of the night, music blaring, um, the whole harm, the whole harm. That was a Freudian slip. The whole home is smart device enabled. I'll, just, I'll leave it at that. So everything, right, is, is smart. And it just sort of runs haywire. And then the kids, it's just, there's a lot that went on that she thought from when she first interviewed that turned out not to be the case. So you'll get the mystery from her writing in prison and the story will unfold. And I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, final book, final book. And I'm, yeah, I'm only gonna be able to talk for so much longer. The Chain by Adrian McKinty. This book sounds crazy. I am actually, not looking forward to reading this one because for some reason something about it I just find so disturbing. It's like a train that's about you just watching it run toward bad stuff and you know it's just gonna hit it and you can't take your eyes away. That's what this book when I read the description felt like to me. So there's this part of me that's just like I, I don't really want to read this um, but I'm gonna read it. So the chain is essentially about a mother drops off her child I assume at school and leaves and gets a phone call from a woman who is also a mother who says, I have your child bound and gagged in the car and you have to pay X amount in ransom and you have to kidnap the child or my son who was previously kidnapped and your daughter will die. And that is basically it. And it goes on. So what's happened is some mastermind of ransom and sadism has essentially set up a series of events where he kidnaps, a child's kidnapped, and the parent has to, to get their child saved, pay the money, and kidnap another child to save their child's life. And it just goes on and on and on. So parents, to save their own children's lives, forget the money you have to pay, have to kidnap another child and make that phone call to that parent saying, I've done this, and your child and my child will die. So they've got to perpetuate the terror. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. I don't even know why I'm going to read this. I don't. I don't. I, I may need like a support group. Maybe someone should read it with me and we can all talk about it then. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just so like terrified of reading this book. And that is it. And I, I am, I'm going to have to put it strategically somewhere where I can come into a lighter, happy place immediately following it. Maybe... I don't even know. I don't I mean, that, I'm not sure because now I'm looking at my books and I'm like, which one said light and happy? Maybe I didn't plan this that well, but I'm sticking to it. I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to pick one and we're going to make it okay. But that is it. So that is September's book. So as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, pop them below and keep your eye out for those book reviews because they will come and take care. Happy reading.